All right, so welcome, welcome. Um, this is a great uh, uh, time to be talking about all of this, uh, you know, especially with the news that we got this morning um, about the, the presidential race and, and how that has changed and things of that nature. And also about, um, about what happened in Wisconsin on Tuesday. So um, even though we are in a pandemic, you know, um, elections and um, electoral engagement, um, still comes up when it needs to and when it has to and it will continue to. So for that, that reason, um, you know, this, is, this conversation is going to be a little bit more informed by what's currently going on than um, what was the state of electoral engagement back in December when this was planned. <laughs> Very different state that we're in right now. Um, but we must persevere and we must continue this effort. It's, it can't stop even though it has the potential to, um, we must continue on for, um, for obvious reasons. So for that being said, um, welcome. Um, this is part of um, Campus Compacts uh, in, um, not engage the election, but um, Education for Democracy Initiative. And this is a series of uh, virtual resource exchanges, different from webinars. Um, we, are we do have a national webinar series but this virtual um, resource exchange is really to do what it says, exchange resources um, on electoral engagement in higher ed. Um, and so this is a little bit informed by um, a project called the Engage the Election Project that we entered into um, leveraging the 2018 midterm elections. And that was a group of about 12 community colleges that received a grant from the Student Learn Student Vote Coalition. Um, to get a small stipend and to figure out how do we do this and how do we do this successfully. Um, by doing that, we ran into a whole bunch of national partners that are doing um, work um, in different aspects of voter registration, voter engagement, education, getting out the vote, um, and also recognizing um, the, the efforts that have been done. Um, so for that being said, this series talks about all of that. How do you prepare for it? How do you plan? How do you register? How do you get students to register? How do you get students to register other students? <laughs> um, and, and also, uh, don't, and not stopping there, how do you engage the, um, the, the, the campus and the community surrounding the campus fully? Um, both in the curriculum as well as co-curricular activities. How do you, what are some best practices? What are some of the experiences? And what are some of the partners and projects that are currently going on? So with that being said, um, we're gonna have um, about, four, um, about four guests today who are kind of experts in the field, kind of buddies and, um, and uh, uh, friends of Campus Compact. And as well as um, a campus from uh, the Engaged Election Project um, from Iowa. You can imagine um, what it's like to be in Iowa in, in, um, in, um, in higher ed and having you know, all these candidates come to your campus. <laughs> and so how do you engage that um, and making sure that students are not turned off by that as well as um, making sure that um, that turn up does happen. Um, and uh, higher education's role in that. So they're gonna be talking about their experiences, some of their best practices, and, but mostly this is for you um, who have gathered here today. We we're so glad to see you. Um, so glad to see you, just saying. It's, 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 it, it feels great to have adult conversations. <laughs> um, and not with like just pets and things like that. I have a fish, but that not a great conversation, you know, conversation, but you know, but anyway, um, I'm working on it. But um, with that being said, let me stop talking um, and uh, yield the floor to, um, to Irving. Um, and Irving is the assistant director of uh, North Carolina Campus Compact and a right star <laughs> <laughs> in voter engagement, democratic engagement, census work, I mean, he is a beast. Um, so it's great to see um, him there in North Carolina and healthy and well. And uh, I yield the floor. Thank you for this. Um, trying to be healthy. <laughs> um, but 
Yeah, welcome everyone. Bienvenidos. Uh, we're really happy to see um, you're tuning in. If you can, please um, turn in your camera. We want to see, we want to, uh, as Verdes mentioned, this is a um, exchange uh, resource um, program, not, a, not your regular webinar. We do have four um, experts as, as panelists, but we want to see uh, an exchange going on um, between the panelists and you all. Um, you can also share your insights, your questions. Um, you can either unmute yourself and ask a questions or please put it in the in the bat chat. Again, we want to see kind of a conversation and this is your opportunity to, to ask the questions that that you may be uh, thinking about um, as, um, as we uh, go. So we have, um, again, uh, Fenn and David from Iowa. We have um, from Kidwork Community College, and then we also have Mike Dean from Lead MN, as well as Manny Rain from um, Student Perks. Um, so I'm gonna ask them to introduce you, um, themselves and then to also share with us uh, your pronouns and how you guys started uh, in your work. So why don't we start with uh, Finn and David, and then we'll go with Mike and then Grant. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm David McMahon, uh, and I'm a professor of history here at Kirkwood Community College. And uh, in, in terms of how I got started in this stuff, who the hell knows how you get started in it? I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, but I used to arrange uh, teach-ins and the like uh, at Kirkwood. And a long time ago, I, uh, I did a conference on conservatism, which made some people mad. They, were, uh, they had conflated what I was doing with my own politics. It was interesting, just by hosting a kind of a conference on conservatism, inviting conservative guests in, it created uh, a bit of a stir. At any rate, I had done enough of these things where by uh, our college had signed on to the democracy commitment, but didn't know what the hell to do with it for a while. And uh, so my dean came to me and said, maybe you'll do something with this. And uh, as I began to attend various conferences and uh, on one uh, cold January day, I walked around Washington, D.C. with Virtus Robinson, I started getting a, a sense of how important uh, this, this work was. So uh, currently I serve as the civic engagement uh, committee chair and our campus's contact for Campus Compact along with my colleague, Finn Colesrud. We may be meeting you virtually, but he lives only two houses away from me here in, uh, in Iowa City. Beyond being a historian and being engaged in this work, I was a city small, more relevant to all this stuff uh, than anything else that I've ever done, and served on a couple commissions here in Iowa City. So that's my story. So, yeah, um, I'm Finn Kalsrud. Uh I teach sociology. I'm a sociology professor at Kirkwood Community College. Uh, David and I are in an interesting situation because uh, David works at the Iowa City campus. I work a half an hour away at the Cedar Rapids campus, uh, but we do live two houses down from each other. Um, and it's an interesting story. I got involved um, with Community Colleges for Democracy or the Democracy Commitment uh, because of Dave, because of David. Um, I was an adjunct professor at the Iowa City campus. Um, and one of the things I thought was really interesting in the commons area, there would be these deliberative dialogues. We, we would learn that they're called deliberative dialogues. They were these kinds of forums on issues like gun rights or immigration or just a range of you know, social issues. And I got really interested and excited about these forums. And I thought, you know, hey, I could bring my classes to these, especially if the forums were happening during a time when I was, you know, teaching a class. And I found that the students got really excited about participating in these forums. The information was very topical, it was very useful for my classes. Um, so, anyway, I got kind of involved with that. And then when I got the full time, teaching assignment at the Cedar Rapids campus. I worked with Dave as the campus, I'm the contact or the liaison for the Cedar Rapids campus uh, for Community Colleges for Democracy. Um, and then we got to do some great things as far as going to some conferences, going to the Kettering Foundation, 
going around and uh, learning about how to engage students as far as civic engagement. And then in 2018, we really got going with uh, engaging the election, participating in that project uh, and trying to get students registered to vote and then get them uh, excited about and then going on to vote uh, in that election. So that's how I got started with this. I'll go next. My name is Mike Dean. I'm the executive director of LEAD Minnesota. We are a statewide student association that represents roughly 180,000 community and technical college students in the state of Minnesota. So there's roughly 30 community colleges in the state. Um, I got involved just like many of our students get involved. You know, when I came on campus, uh, there were five words that really changed my life forever. And that was someone approaching me asking me if I was registered to vote. Uh, and so after that, I got really involved with this work on campus as a student leader and then basically never stopped and I've never really grown up, I guess, either. Uh, and so I continue to do this work and really help our students out uh, and guide them through this process to really uh, build civic agency on our campuses, uh, also do advocacy uh, and agency for themselves. But then more importantly, that leadership development component is huge to really help us develop Minnesota's next generation of great leaders. I'll pass it over to Manny. Thanks, Mike. Um, hi, folks. I'm Manny Rin. I'm the director of the New Voters Project uh, with the student perks based here in Denver, Colorado. Um, I got my start doing this work uh, um, back in 2009. If you think of the student perks as a um, kind of pipeline of leadership for young people. Um, growing up in a very non-political household that asked me to get involved, which was CalPERG. Since 2009, I filled up and um, I do a lot of work with all of our campus chapters around the country. We're currently in nine uh, full-time states, uh, but then like to expand, um, you know, every electoral year to get more people. So it's a bit about me. Great. Thank you, everyone. So you sort of, um, and for this question, feel free to jump in, uh, no particular order, but um, the four of you kind of started touching up, uh, upon this, but if uh, what projects are you leading uh, at the moment? Is there a project that excites you uh, the most? If, um, you want to share with us? Well, if, if I can just uh, see you folks, I just want to talk briefly about a project we just finished up. Uh, you mentioned it before, we are, we're in Iowa. And so uh, the first in the nation uh, status of our caucus we took advantage of this year and we did a number of uh, voter education events and we held a mock caucus uh, really over the course of two days. And so we had a, a, a pizza for president uh, uh, day where we, instead of using political candidates, we, we used pizza essentially. And, uh, and it worked well as a training device because the caucuses can be kind of complicated. And then on the two days later, we had an actual mock caucus where we had speeches made for all the candidates, all the major candidates, and we had people align in ways uh, that, uh, that you would during the Iowa caucuses. And uh, we, we decided to give the, the students, there's more than 100 and some students that showed up in the Iowa City campus. Ben can speak a little bit about what happened in Cedar Rapids also, although he was in both locations. Uh, but we gave out identity cards so people we, we would do it for the republicans and we would do it for the democrats and uh i live in a very i live in a very active neighborhood i live in a very active city as far as uh, politics goes but i think we ended up being the largest trainer of people in our county in terms of preparing people to go to the iowa caucuses and a lot of them 
are, were young people and they were new immigrants. And uh, so we were able to put together a, a couple videos, some training videos and some other stuff. And uh, we're, we were not responsible for the failure of the app that the uh, Democratic Party had kind of handed down to Iowa. Of course, everybody's forgotten about that now. Thank God for the coronavirus, you know. Uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, that was a major focus of, of what we were doing early on this year. I guess, yeah, Dave said, uh, you know, I could speak to the Cedar Rapids version of that. Yeah, we did roughly the, the same sorts of things as far as those activities. Um, what's interesting to me or what was interesting to me is uh, a lot of us, you know, we work in higher ed or, you know, we've got folks here that are specifically, you know, working to get folks registered, to get people voting. Um, but, you know, we're interacting with students day to day that the, the question I got from, uh, I got from day to day in my classroom when the caucuses came up, the idea of the caucuses is a lot of my students didn't even know what the caucuses were. Okay. So the idea that, our students in our classes maybe were not engaged or didn't care. They knew about the caucuses uh, or caucusing and they knew the value of it, but they said, oh, I don't really want to do that. That's just not true. Um, in fact, a lot of students, when learning about this whole process, they were just blown away. They were like, well, I didn't know I could, you know, go to a, a community building and, and actually debate or discuss with people, you know, what I think and who I want to be the candidate. Um, yeah, and even, and, and we're kind of sort of specifically talking about the Democratic caucuses. There were also folks that, you know, wanted to participate in the Republican one, and they didn't even know that it was happening because they thought, well, Trump's going to be the nominee. But there were some folks that got some information about the Republican caucuses, and they got involved with the Republican Party as they wanted to do that. And, you know, they were really excited about that. So uh, it was just interesting to me, you know, I, when the Iowa caucuses come around, I think everybody knows about it, excited about it, and our students think that they do not think about it, so. Well, let me uh, just say one other thing. Important in all this process was some of the student leaders that got involved, fortunate from Campus Compact to have a a seat fellow, a campus election engagement project fellow. So we had a uh, uh, an undergraduate student who, and she, it was her idea working with others to put together a caucus training video. And ultimately that particular video that this student or a PTK member uh, made ended up being part of uh, kind of the official uh, camp, Iowa, Minnesota campus compact uh, voter information. Uh, so uh, I, I want to emphasize that the student participation of that and also collaboration with student life. Student life has budgets and money for things and they were able to spring for the pizza and some other stuff. And uh, collaborating with people in our media uh, department who were more than willing to take time to produce informational videos, document the event itself. And so now we've captured a nice little, uh, you know, four or five minute uh, account of what went on that, that day. And that's something that our administration uh, can look to and understand that we did it. It's also a resource that we can hand out to other folks so that they can get a sense of uh, why the, a project like that is necessary. And, uh, you know, especially now with the, uh, with the pandemic and we can't get together, it's amazing to see footage of people milling around in a room doing democracy physically as they did during the mock caucus. And so it's, it's a great, uh, it's a great artifact of that event. Um, I, I could go. Um, so just, just talk a bit more about uh, the new voters, uh, new voters project and the student perks. Um, so just quickly, the student perks are a network of student run, student funded uh, nonprofit organizations that work across the country. Um, over the last 50 years, and what's made us really effective is uh, that tens of thousands of students across the country um, chip in 10 to 20 bucks a quarter. That allows us to hire full-time organizers, 
um, staff and advocates to work full time for, for these students. Um, and then the New Voters Project was one we created in the, uh, 1984 and since then has helped register over 2 million young voters around the country and then also um, make uh, two and a half million get out the vote contacts. So our overall mission is to you know, create cultures of civic engagement on college campuses, which of course includes voting and doing a lot of you know, big, big work uh, to register and turn out students every two to four years, but it does go way beyond that. So how do we um, integrate, um, you know, integrate voting and education around voting uh, into all the things that you know, everything a university does uh, so we really do have a holistic approach when it comes to the voter work that we do. Um, one thing we're thinking specifically about this upcoming year is how do we um, kind of adapt the on the ground tactics that we know that we know work from research and from our track record. Um, so all the peer to peer work, um, doing class announcements and uh, organizing big events and doing on campus clipboarding and tabling, uh, but also the, you know, peer-to-peer -peer work we do through phone banking and texting, but how do we adapt some of those tactics with the uh, potential of students not being in person uh, this coming fall uh, as with the, um, you know, potential with the uh, you know, pandemic and everything going on. Uh, so that's one thing definitely on my mind that we're working closely with our student leaders on campuses across the country, as well as administrators and faculty. Uh, you know, of course, full, um, you know, first step is to figure out what the plans are and if, you know, if classes will all move to virtual classes in the fall, but I think getting ahead and trying to figure out what, you know, what are some of these tactics that work best to reach out to students virtually is something that we're focused on. Um, so some of our chapters are in Connecticut and New Jersey, so places where we still have primaries uh, still to go. So testing out, um, you know, tactics that we can use over social media, how to engage students that way, um, how to work with faculty and professors to do uh, class announcements over the Zoom hangouts, whether it's uh, doing an actual announcement before the class or, you know, playing a recorded video. So all those are things we're testing and definitely on my mind as we adapt um, some of our tactics that we know work to, to this, you know, potentially changed, changed world and changed model of organizing. And then I'll wrap things up. Uh, our work is really focused on voter registration here. Uh, we knew that we had limited resources, and so we wanted to find the best way we could have the greatest impact in terms of engaging students civically. And so we use data from uh, the National Study for Learning Voting Engagement and saw that roughly 90% of our students that were registered to vote actually voted. And so we knew if we could get more students registered to vote, that that would boost up our engagement significantly. So that has been the focus of our work really since January here. And one of the things that we did is we also then brought both the census and our voter registration effort together and spent, uh, before the COVID-19 closed down our campuses, we spent about eight weeks going out to campuses and specifically going to classrooms, uh, asking faculty for just five minutes, doing a quick announcement on what the census is, but then tying that into voter registration. And in just a few weeks, we had over 6,000 students commit to fill out their census form. Uh, we roughly registered about 1,500 students over that period of time and felt that that was a huge level of engagement. And now we're working to then engage those students then going forward. And specifically, we're gearing up for November and helping students to essentially develop campus-based action plans that will then sort of drive their activity. And what's great about how we run our process is it's very much student-led. And so when students develop those plans, they're much more likely to implement and execute those plans. And so we have an event coming up here on April 17th where students will come together, put those plans together. We're actually giving out some grant money and funding some of those plans. And then we did this in 2018 and saw a huge level of engagement. And so we're do, still doing this in light of everything that's going on, we're making some assumptions that we'll be back to campus, but obviously if things change, then we'll have to kind of adjust some of this work uh, to think about how we can mobilize and do this work online. Great. Um, so you all have talked in a lot of different, um, well, 
shed light in a, uh, to a lot of uh, different points. Um, so participants, if you all have any particular questions or you wanna, you want uh, any of our panelists to go into more detail um, to something that you heard, please unmute yourself, ask, uh, or if you feel um, more comfortable using the chat box, please send us your questions. Um, but we've been um, kind of sort of talking about the political engagement process uh, for students, of course. Um, so if, um, if you all can talk about um, your strategies to registering students and then also to turn them um, to voters. So the, the process of, of, uh, of your programs or initiatives um, on how do you engage students, and Mike, you were, you were alluding to this, um, registering students, and then how do you actually turn them into um, actual voters? So the number one piece of ours is one that peer-to-peer -peer network. We know that when students go out and talk to other students, uh, that really increases the likelihood. Somebody as old as me, you know, I'm not always as persuasive as a fellow student. So that is really a cornerstone of our work. Um, and then two is really working on messages that then try to resonate, that will resonate with students. So we test that out. Uh, we really sit down with our students, write out a script, um, and then we basically are always evaluating it. College affordability is a huge issue for a lot of our students. So we very much talk about that uh, and use that as a way to really sort of mobilize them, but not do it in a way that is, um, you know, negatively impacts the institution. It's really helping students because we are a public institution, understanding that legislators make decisions about funding that has a direct impact on your tuition, but then also on the quality of your education. And so that's why it's important for students to go out. And so creating that agency, I would say, is really, Really key and then I mean I can't emphasize enough how important election laws in your state and obviously that's not something everyone can really control here but you know, Minnesota has led the nation in, in student engagement and I would say it's, it has a large part to do with we have same-day registration we have no excuse absentee balloting and so that goes a long way in making voting much more accessible and tearing down some of the barriers that too often exist in our colleges and we saw yesterday in Wisconsin some of the huge challenges that then happen too as a result of election processes. And so I think then the third part is I'd really encourage folks to build relationships then with your local election administrators and having those conversations, you know, even trying to get your students in to be poll workers is a great way to build rapport. You're providing a win-win for the student. You're providing a win-win for the county election officials because I think a lot, they're gonna have a hard time this fall recruiting workers uh, if this if COVID-19 continues to go around. And so this might be an opportunity for uh, students to really play an inside track. And then from there, the counties, I think, are going to be more receptive to being supported. Now, I'm, I'm learning a lot here from uh, listening to Michael talk here. Uh, the, uh, Minnesota's done just a, a fantastic job. And uh, over the last couple of years in Iowa, things have changed as the legislature has and the governorship has uh, come under Republican control. So there has been some challenges to some of our traditions of, uh, of access uh, to voting. But generally, still, uh, what we've adopted is a kind of calendar that something like this. We're, we're trying to involve uh, honor students and other clubs in the registering of students. Mike made the 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 point about peer to peer we're finding that that is that that's the way that really works again we've been fortunate to have a C fellow to to have a someone who gets a fellowship where she can do the nonpartisan uh, this year Raina had, did just a fantastic job of organizing the nonpartisan uh, effort to uh, register voters we uh, cooperate with the League of Women Voters in Johnson and Lynn County and they come to register students on our campus and participate and add a bit of gravitas. Uh, to the process. We try and uh, frame up some, uh, as Michael said, identify some issues that students are interested in and have deliberations about them. All of this is gearing up to uh, satellite voting on campus. Uh, we're, and again, who knows what's going to happen in the fall, but what we were hoping to happen is, you know, looking at our data and trying to make huge increases in having satellite voting on our campus and making it a college-wide civic learning event where from the president of the college to faculty, students, staff, and so on, that we all show up at our college and we vote on campus together. 
and have a kind of party at the polls so that we uh, demonstrate the importance of registering to vote and, uh, and voting right on campus. That was the idea. I hope that doesn't get disrupted through uh, by going virtual, but that's what we're hoping to do. And there was some challenges for a time in Iowa about say the Regents universities like the University of Iowa continuing to have satellite voting. And those are very, you know, undemocratic uh, challenges, but for whatever reason, it was never in doubt that the community college would continue to have satellite voting. And so uh, that's, that's the route that, that we're going. Finn, I don't know if you wanna add anything to that. Yeah, um, we also have, I believe it's uh, Kirkwood Votes. So we have a, a, a nice connection uh, our group, our committee with uh, Student Life. And so Student Life, uh, they will send out through our you know, campus-wide uh, learning platform, online learning platform, they send out reminders about uh, registering to vote. Uh, and so then there's a website that, uh, a page that we have that can tell students you know, where to register, how to register, eligibility requirements, ID requirements when they uh, are to go to vote. Um, so that is something that I've talked to Dave a little bit about this, um, that we're going to have to start, you know, finding a way to get a lot of this stuff in to a, a sort of virtual space. So we've talked a little bit about some of the videos that we've done as far as the mock caucus stuff. Um, we've talked a little bit about, you know, uh, you know, producing some of these things. Well, it, this would be a good time, I think, to even move more things to the virtual realm. So, you know, really, uh, you know, working on promoting that virtually, I guess that's all I got with that. But uh, uh, another thing I had too with, was with the student leader that we have student ambassadors, so we don't have a student government, but we have student ambassadors. And they have kind of an interesting role on the Kirkwood campus. They show you know prospective students around uh, the campus they promote the campus in various ways and one thing that's been great is we've been able to utilize some of these student ambassadors to do some tabling to then promote that website to promote the voter registration information um, and we've had some activities like some raffles and other sorts of things uh, that have just promoted this so i think you know that's all i wanted to add with that if I could add just one more thing, uh, and again, this is why students are so important. Uh, some students came up with the idea of creating how to register votes in uh, multilingual formats because they, these are communities that they're represented by. Uh, the Sudanese community, and we've got Congolese, and we've got various other folks that have come, uh, new immigrants uh, around Iowa City. And so the other path now is working on the uh, uh, register for uh, for students and then having our students go out to those communities and make those presentations because our community college is very much uh, a, a a community center if you will for for those communities they uh, they really actively take up that space and make themselves at home there and so uh, that's a way in which we can uh, we can move beyond just even the students but our students can organize those communities and get them to vote. Um, I, I do see that there are um, a couple of questions in the, the, the chat room. I just want to lift them up a little bit um, because they're really great questions. And, and, um, and also um, I do see um, that, that Mike Burns is here from, from Campus Vote Project. And so um, after these two questions, I would love to hear um, the work that I know that he's done in, um, in Cleveland, um, demystifying the voting process, because I think that's another piece of it that we're not, um, that we haven't addressed yet. Um, registering, but how to, um, um, how to demystify the process and, um, and uh, so that it's, it's not uh, an intimidating um, uh, process and, um, uh, to, and, and as a way of getting students to vote. But one question was about, you know, with the uncertainty of this pandemic, and this comes from Keith, um, Keith from, um, from Virginia, it's with the Shenandoah, Shenandoah University, I believe is a private school. Um, what, what, I mean, anyone on the panel, um, what would you recommend students re um, registering at, through, through, in their hometowns or in their college location? I know that 
in the fall, we're not we're really not sure if we're going to be on campus or not. But um, but I think right now is the time is it is the time to plan for that, for if we're going to be on campus or not. So there's there's two um, F, uh, uh, levels there. But what uh, what what do you think about that about uh, students registering um, at, in their hometowns versus their college location, especially if they're not community college students? Yeah, I, I can take a crack at that. So that's, um, yeah, that's a pretty big question. Uh, we work a lot with, um, you know, some, some pretty large universities with a lot of out-of-state students. And that's a question that I think a lot of folks are still grappling with. I think generally um, Mike's response to this, just asking students where they want to vote is the way we go about it as well. But I think important to figure out like, you know, if they do want to stay, it, let's say they're living at home out of state, but if they do want to stay registered in the state they go to school in, that they have the education resources to know how to actually get their absentee ballot. Um, that is one piece of education that we think is pretty pretty critical and will be important, especially as every you know state absentee laws are slightly different. So that's one thing that we um, are going to prioritize for for our program. So at least at the reg um, registration piece of it, uh, giving you know giving the ownership up to the student to um you know to register like where they ultimately want but more importantly that they have the education you know no matter where they register they know what the actual voting laws are um so that's that's a piece on that and then i guess the last thing just going back to the last conversation just echo the importance of um the the peer-to-peer -peer work that you know based on a ton of research the peer-to-peer engagements um, are the things that have the biggest impact. So the more you can think through for your campuses, what that looks like um, and how to get students involved as the leaders um, in the effort is pretty, pretty key. So I think that was already echoed. Um, I just want to echo that from what other folks have said already. If I can add, oh, well, I just wanted to add one little thing um, just to keep in the back of like, if depending on where students register, if they end up having to leave again, which is what we just did, there are a lot of students who had already sent off for absentee ballots that then were en route during the process. So it's, it's a good thing to remember um, if we end up with that kind of terrible, you know, back and forth again, just to know the sooner they reach out to their local board of elections, the sooner they can get that, um, you know, mitigated or whatever. Uh, if I can, go ahead, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to address Kathleen's question in the chat then too. So Kathleen talks a little bit about what are some of the different programs that exist out there. And I think this is definitely a challenge for institutions right now. There's a, a lot, a plethora of party at the polls to, you know, Mike's work around CVP. Um, and so I think one of the things that some national groups are trying to do through the Students Learn, Students Vote Coalition is kind of put together all those options for campuses and then really from there for you to kind of pick and choose. Because I think for every campus, it's really about you know, what's going on there, what works, what do you think is going to engage students. So one of the things that we are doing with our campus action planning process is we're laying out all these options and then letting students essentially pick and choose what they think is going to be effective and then from there you know that's how we're kind of proceeding so some you know will help you with registration you know mike has done a lot of work around registration particularly in the orientation process which works on a lot of campuses you know sometimes that's a little bit more of a challenge in a community college campus because they don't have that sort of real sort of new student process that some of our bigger r1 institutions so a lot of it is just figuring out what's your campus you know your culture you know your community and then putting together what you think is going to work best uh, there going forward. And so that's kind of how we navigate a lot of these different pieces uh, then too. And some of the national programs also bring in resources. So if you're a smaller liberal arts college, that can be super beneficial then too as part of it. David, you wanted to mention something? Oh, I was, I was just going to say, uh, in an election year like this one, the national is, of course, going to dominate everything. We have uh, in Iowa uh, an election for senator, and 
uh, as well as the presidential election. So that's that's going to dominate things. But having this culture of civic engagement is really important for the local uh, level. And I thought about what Amy was saying there, and one of their, you know, Mike is right that they should have a choice. Uh, but I can tell you the context of Iowa City is one where it's a student population, University of Iowa, as well as Kirkwood and so on. And uh, uh, they get very politically active there and they can have a dramatic impact on local politics in ways that actually affect them, uh, whether it's, it has to do with the rent of their housing and so on. So it's nice to, uh, to get them involved in the, in the local politics and get them to register to vote and get them acclimated into a very, very active political community. Great. Do any uh, of our panelists want to uh, also touch on any of the questions that were posed? I know that Mike had already um, answered that and uh, Manny, but feel free at any point. Uh, I did, you know, I, um, many of our colleagues have always mentioned um, that tapping into faculty is a great idea to get into uh, more uh, more students and Mike had already um, kind of alluded to this but I was wondering uh, since we have two faculty members um, in the panel how do you uh, work best with faculty whether you are um, so it's a, it's a two-fold uh, question if you will um, we may have some faculty uh, in the audience, so if you, um, so talking from the faculty perspective, any kind of uh, feedback on your uh, fellow faculty members on how to um, incorporate the democratic um, process into your classes. And then on the other hand, for, um, for staff or civic engagement professionals uh, working in, in higher ed, how do you build relationships with faculty that, um, that the ass might become, um, you know, a little smoother, or or it's not just uh, as stark. So, any kind of advices for um, for staff working with faculty on the uh, election engagement process? Um, you know, here's here's how it's worked best for us. As uh, Finn said. Uh, we were doing interesting things out in the commons area, and it attracted his attention, and that's how he and I. Uh, uh, got to know each other. Actually, we got to know each other randomly at an Iowa-Minnesota football game, to be honest. Uh, we, we were both been, he was given a ticket and I was given a ticket. We didn't even know each other and he worked on my campus. But at any rate, uh, the way that I like to do it is to reach out to faculty, to have three or four uh, faculty to get together and co-teach something of interest. Maybe it's uh, uh, something on gun violence or something else that's in the news. And Community college teachers have a lot of teaching to do. It's nice to have a kind of moment where you can plan a teach-in. Uh, they can just bring their classes down into that area and they can participate. More interested in doing that. And that you began, you know, for the students, they see uh, that all their different courses connect in a way. And uh, the faculty get a chance to collaborate with each other. And that tends to give the movement some momentum and, and people to see its importance. And then the administration or student life are excited that something terrific actually happened, that there were you know several hundred people say show up and actually uh, get involved. And so that's how you bring faculty in, I think. And uh, you know in, in our case, we have a the Kirkwood Faculty Association. Our, our college is supposed to be run on uh, in shared governance. and uh, so democracy is supposed to be our business. So it shouldn't be too difficult to bring people in. But uh, just like students, some people don't think it's their business. So this year we took over assessment day. Assessment day is normally a time of horror, going over data uh, and so forth, something we have to do. And we take a wonderful day out of our uh, winter break and we show up, all of us on campus, and have to go over data. And, this year, we, uh, we hijacked the proceedings and did civic engagement stuff and the deliberative dialogue and so forth. And I think we finally reached the point where we've touched all the faculty of our institution in a way. And we got feedback that this is what they wanted to do and that uh, registering people to vote and talking about voting is our business. And so I think we, after several years, we finally got maybe not universal buy-in, but a lot more buy-in that way. 
sometimes it just takes time. Yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that assessment day. Uh, once again, it was a lot better than our traditional assessment day. Uh, but I think one of the big things that came out of that day uh, was that faculty started thinking about civic engagement being a part of their job, which is kind of an interesting point because it's one of the learning outcomes that you know we are evaluated, we assess at our at our college. But I think a lot of people didn't really th know how to tackle maybe uh, civic engagement as as something to assess. Um, in some of the feedback, we actually had some faculty members that were felt this sort of excitement or liberation that they could actually talk about politics, they could talk about voting, that they were somehow under this assumption that voting just in and of itself was a political issue, that promoting voting was somehow a political issue. And to tell our, uh, our fellow colleagues, you know, that this is something that we should be doing, as the community's college, we should be promoting civic engagement and voting. I think, you know, a lot of a lot of our colleagues were just like, oh, I didn't know that this was something that uh, we we were really wanting to do, which sounds strange because we would just assume that that would be a part of um, everybody's, you know, classwork. But a lot of a lot of faculty were excited. And then what was great at assessment day was that we had a lot of faculty from different fields, different departments, uh, interacting with one another and talking about how they could collaborate on like deliberative dialogues, for example, uh, people from very different disciplines talking about how they could potentially put on a deliberative dialogue about an issue that touches both of their disciplines, but in different ways. Um, so, you know, those discussions just happen sort of organically at that assessment day. Uh, and it was something that you know, we think of, you know, engaging faculty, that may be awkward or difficult. It just seemed so easy when we did that assessment day. But. Right, so um, Mike, I'm sorry to put you on this, uh, Mike Burns, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but could you talk a little bit more about uh, orientation programs, and particularly about the um, Ask Every Student um, initiative that you have going on? Yeah, happy to. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm Mike with the Campus Vote Project. We're a nonpartisan student voting organization uh, based inside a voting rights advocacy group called the Fair Election Center in DC, um, but have um, state staff in eight states now as well for the Campus Vote Project work. And one of the things that we've been working on for a little over a year now is the uh, Ask Every Student program. We look at some programs in places like uh, Western and Stony Brook that were systematizing kind of the voter registration uh, for more of their incoming students. And digging in, one of the things we kind of really realized is that a lot of it has to do with like one, that systemic nature and also like the intentionality of it. Um, so I do think to Mike Dean, uh, my other favorite Mike to do uh, student voting work with, is that um, you can embed it in other processes is one of the things we're starting to look into, but it really is about making sure that there is, you know, someone who understands the voter registration process and is trained in it is able to um, spend, you know, three to five minutes individually with each student and kind of walk them through some of those options. Do they want to register at a prior home address? Do they want to register at the campus address? What does that mean? Double check the form. Um, you know, a lot of them are collecting the forms and then submitting them to kind of take that level of barrier out. Um, and then also a lot of them too have started kind of, we've been trying to So the voter registration is also just the first step. It's like kind of a, a gateway. It's an open conversation, but it really sets the tone like at this campus, um, you know, democratic engagement is something we value enough that if it's vetting orientation, you're gonna see it right when you show up or you're gonna hear about it in a classroom presentation that's in a first year class, um, but then also get directed to some of these other ongoing pro programs or opportunities or organizations on campus that are doing other like civic engagement work. I'm happy to, to answer if there's sort of specific questions around that. All right, thank you, Mike. Um, all right, we have about um, nine minutes left. So if you have um, any other questions, feel free to um, 
um, to put it in the, in the chat box. But I was wondering, um, you know, we, uh, we have had questions about sort of like what works best. And if you could just give um, any advice to people who might be, um, you know, starting more um, kind of like registering students to vote uh, on their campus, or perhaps they have something already going on but they've been offering the same thing for a, a few years. So any kind of advice to start something or to move um, to deepen that work of um, student engagement on, on their campuses? I'm gonna share in the chat um, something I actually got from one of my colleagues at Miami-Dade College. They made a civic engagement scorecard. Um, so that's been something that's helpful. So I'm just gonna post that there. And maybe I'll just go there on there. Um, competitions, I think, tend to work very well for students. Uh, we've done this statewide in Minnesota for a number of years where we would uh, have competitions between campuses and they would try to collect the most number of uh, pledges. So essentially asking students to pledge to vote. I've also seen this work on an individual campus level where you have departments, student organizations all compete against each other. Uh, and so that just can be fun and motivating. This year, we moved our competition to mirror than the NSOL data. And so we don't award it till the very end, but we're basing it purely off of, of voter participation. So whichever campus has the highest level of voter participation, we are doing a democracy cup and it's, it's this giant trophy uh, that we hand out to different types of institutions. We do one for community colleges, four-year colleges, a public and then four-year privates. Um, and then we also do a most improved. And we've partnered with our Secretary of State on that. And he's really kind of brought it in. We get some media attention as part of that. And it's been really motivating for campus leadership then to go ahead and push forward and, and be more actively engaged with this because the trophy is like something you would get for athletic type of conference. And so it's really exciting when we hand that out and rewarding for the students, but then also those faculty and administrators that played a huge role in boosting that engagement. I just want to say that's excellent, Mike. <laughs> that's great. That's the kind of stuff we have to uh, we have to have down here. I hope maybe you'll come down and visit us in Kirkwood sometime. Any thoughts, Manny? from um, particularly since uh, you guys work in different campuses, something innovative that you have seen? Yeah, um, uh, sorry, so yeah, as far as, nothing that's specific other than it, just the importance of starting to have meetings. Those are not created all for that campus, assuming it's not in person. Um, I just think that is, you know, working with our 30 campuses, people are at various levels of being prepared for it. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, with so many resources out there, whether it's studentvoting.org um, or online registration tools like studentvote.org, there's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of existing resources that we can start talking about, you know, with vote coalitions early to just be prepared. So um, less of a, you know, specific thing, but more of a kind of thing to start thinking about early. Great. All right, um, so we only have a couple So if you all can just share a minute or two on final thoughts, something that you haven't said, any uh, best practices, um, how did they get in contact with you, anything you wanna share with us? Well, I just wanna, I just wanna say a couple things. Um, I, believing in the value of nonpartisan uh, voter engagement is great. Uh, it's great when we are able to, on the local level, uh, be a, an example of what we want the country to be, people getting, across, getting together across party lines and uh, deliberating together. Um, I, I think elections are the best civic learning opportunity that we have, and uh, to the extent that uh, we're able to do it, hopefully have it 
institution wide. But finally, I want to say for those, particularly those that are faculty and staff, uh, you know, the we nurture local politics uh, through this activity. I was thinking as I was preparing for this call, the Secretary of State at, at Iowa was a Kirkwood Community College graduate. Uh, the current mayor of Iowa City was a nursing student graduate of our college, and he's the first African American and gay mayor of our city. Uh, we elected the first Sudanese female city councilor in the country who also went to Kirkwood Community College. Uh, we have an African American who is now in the Johnson County Board of Supervisors who went to Kirkwood Community College. And so the work that we do in our classrooms and uh, in this kind of activity is really important and paying off in a big way. Um, I can just add a little, we just um, hosted uh, Congress to Campus at HWS and uh, it was literally the weekend before we closed down. And uh, um, one of the things the students kept asking, and they just kept saying, these two former congresswomen kept saying over and over again, this is one of the benefits to government and um, local issues. And it, it, because it's connected to the college, have a lot more discourse about it. You can bring it into your classes and make it part of your entire experience. And so they were really promoting that idea, which I think a lot of students, um, we, we just hadn't thought about it that way before. So that's a, it's, not, it's just another um, avenue possibly for certain students. I just uh, wanted to second both of those uh, statements from uh, Davey, David and Amy there. Uh, one of my big things with promoting civic engagement uh, and doing some activities, co-curricular activities that have to do with voting and voting re voter registration is that uh, from a faculty perspective, um, it's great for student success. Uh, so students that are participating in these events, they do better in the classes, they persist, there's higher retention rates. So, you know, it should be an easy sell if we're talking to our fellow colleagues about doing this kind of work because we're gonna have better students and we're gonna have students uh, that are persisting, that we retain, so everybody wins. So, and, my, and one thing I, my last thing I like to say, uh, I'll never forget this, quote, we had some voter registration uh, information tied to it. But one of my students said to me after class, he said, I was so glad that we got out of class today because this was really fun. But what was interesting about it is that that hour that we had done the deliberative dialogue, that was class time. And so it didn't feel like this sort of normal, you know, mundane class experience. It was something fun and interactive, but meaningful to them. And so I think that's why this is so impactful for not only getting folks involved in their communities, uh, but also getting them involved and in staying in their classwork and doing great in school, so. And I think that's a key thing is really treating voting as a gateway into all this work. I think too often we just stop at voting and that is very transactional. And we've heard uh, folks particularly at Circle and Tufts really talk about how we grow voters. And this really needs to be a work that we do 365 days a year. And so to pick off what Amy said, you know, it's not just then about voting, it's also finding ways that they can have meaningful impact with the federal government. We all know that's really difficult these days, but I take students up to our Minnesota State Capitol on a regular basis. They testify in bills. They actually pass legislation almost on an annual basis. And that is so empowering to them that they actually then see the impact of their work in November, then come forward in March and April and May as our legislative session. And so I think bringing those connections is really important. And I think there tends to be a hesitancy from campus to say, we're just gonna stop at elections and leave it at that, but you gotta build in that next piece. And it's not just then about elections and issue advoca advocacy, but it's also issue development. So what are we doing going out listening to students and getting feedback from them of what they care about and then making sure that goes through the elections. And then the last piece is just really try to bring an equity lens to this work 
one of the things that we've done at Lean Minnesota is we ask every student if they're registered to vote. And we don't basically ask about status. So what we do is we engage them in a conversation. If they are not eligible to vote, we still try to find ways for them to be involved. And we've seen a huge community um, of non-citizens actually go through this process, register their fellow students to vote. Then they go through and become passionate and actually go through the citizenship process. And now this election, we've had a number of them that are voting for the first time. And some of these folks are just so inspirational and their story that they tell their fellow students sometimes is a wake up call to that apathy that can sometimes exist on our campuses. Uh, you know, we're pretty much out of time, but I just wanted to echo everything people said already. And is the last thing I'll say is, um, you know, the, the, the importance of making sure and helping, you know, this movement be led by young people. Um, there's just a ton of, you know, opportunity for people to take on even more during a challenging time, during an important election. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is there's a lot of um, existing resources out there. So wearing another hat, um, I'm on the, one of the chairs of the committee that works specifically with campuses and faculty and admin uh, with the Student Learn Student Vote Coalition, where we talk a lot about these things, how to be a, a resource. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously a lot of things we can do and should do. Uh, well, and, you know, me personally happy to work, work more closely with anyone on the call, so. Thank you, Manny, um, Mike, David, and Finn for, um, being with us, thank you everyone for tuning in. Just as a reminder, uh, we have two uh, virtual resource exchange left um, next month, one on um, the 13th and one on the 20th. The next one is talking about the resources to support and recognize successful student voting engagement efforts. So be sure to tune in next month. Thank you all very much and have a great day. Take care everybody. Bye. Be well. Stay well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, go. Hi, Verdis. Hi, good to see you. Great to see you too. I love your background. Where are you? I'm at um, Eastman Theater in Rochester, New York. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they're playing the Tchaikovsky uh, Pathetique Symphony, one of my favorite symphonies. Otherwise, I, I'm more of a vocal person, so I like the, you know, vocal music, but if the if someone is pay, playing Tchaikovsky, I'm there. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. Good to see you. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see each other again, I guess. Yeah. Um, let, let's connect sometime soon because, you know, my last day is Friday, so... Oh, are you yeah. still on? This Friday? Yes. Uh, and, and David, um, you can stay on. I, I, I'll talk to you in a second. Um, but, but yeah. Oh, I had lost track of time. That's too bad. <laughs> Things change, right? Yeah. Wish you the best. Yeah, let's stay in touch. And you've just had two um, new community colleges join the compact and maybe a Oh, third. wow. So we're That's fantastic. Yeah. Great. It is very good. Um, and so I'll be talking with you and, and Tori okay. and bringing you guys to Kettering um, about uh, introducing right. and implementing um, deliberative dialogues in community colleges specifically. So this, this could help out your, your, the engagement of your new community colleges. So, all right, you're definitely on my list. Come on in. Thank you so much. All right, take care. Okay, bye. Thanks, David for your work today. Appreciate it. <laughs>